So here we are, day 20. Um, probably one of the harder days today. I have been quite hungry. Um, had my first shake at 20 past eight. Um, my usual hot chocolate. Just knew it's my hair looks horrendous, but never mind. Um, my usual hot chocolate with some beanies coffee. Um, I had the amaretto one because I'm at work, and that's the one that I've got in work at the moment. Love that as usual. Um, come about half past eleven, I was already wanting my next shake, so I sort of tried to keep myself distracted in work as much as possible. Um, doing emails, taking some calls, um, sort of just fiddling about doing bits and pieces, just trying to distract myself really. Managed to last until about half past 12. Um, couldn't wait until my lunchtime at one o'clock. So I had a mint choc bar. That was fine. Still felt hungry afterwards and was thinking, bang on four o'clock, that's going to be it. I'm going to be having my next product. Um, Come about four o'clock, was about to go on my break, got told I needed to go on the phones, take a few more calls, 10 past four, that was it, enough. Tea break time, off I went to go and make my veg soup. Um, it did satisfy me for a bit, got home, boyfriend's not been feeling too well, um, hasn't slept well and works night, so went up, spoke to him, that sort of distracted me for a little bit. Not gonna lie, I could definitely have had my fourth product the moment I walked in the door. So, he then said he wanted to go shopping. Oh my God, literally walking round Lidl, I could have pretty much, at most of Lidl, to be fair, literally could have just picked up everything and anything. Um, Kept picking up things, looking at it, thinking, oh, I really, really want that. But no, I'm going to stay strong. I am going to do this this time. We're not going to make excuses. I'm not going to die if I don't eat something and I wait until about eight, nine o'clock to have my product. And I'm still here. Um, I've not dropped down dead from... <laughs> Waiting a little bit longer. I don't feel like I've been utterly starved and deprived. A um, little bit of a grumbly tummy. Also today managed to achieve my four litre fluid goal, which is fantastic because that's been a long time coming. Um, I've only been managing about two and three quarters, three litres of water, which for me isn't really enough. Um, when your weight's a lot higher, you do actually need a bit more fluid, really. So uh, that's what I've been drinking. Um, not gonna lie though, came back from Lidl. Boyfriend decided he was having steak for tea. Now, I'm not gonna lie, there's a little bit of me that could have murdered him or the steak, either way. Um, he cooked it in butter with garlic. The smell was absolutely amazing but I didn't have any of it. So, absolutely amazing um, with new potatoes. So he, due to us being a bit late back from the shops, has had his steak. The whole house stinks of garlic butter, which is like heaven normally to me because I'd have gone and had steak with him. However, not quite so heaven so normally he when I was so say on plan would leave the new potatoes said item and I'd have quite successfully eaten about three or four of them then shoved them in the fridge hope that he didn't go to eat the rest of them and noticed that I'd gone and eaten half of them our kitchen looks like a utter disaster zone at the moment. I'm full of everything that I would have picked the little bits off of. Just to say, I've stuck to plan. When actually all I've done is try my hardest to nibble at everything. So, the house still stinks because the frying pan that he cooked it in is in the sink. The plate 
that he had it on. Look at all that butter on there. Look at it. Just exactly what I could eat right now. That's really bad, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, basically. Now, I know that some people get really, really pissed off with their husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends, other halves, whoever they are that they live with, sitting down and eating normal food. They're not on the fucking diet with you. Of course they're going to eat normal food. And if they don't want to do a diet or don't need to do a diet, why the fuck should they sit eating bloody rabbit food? Now, I know it's not rabbit food, it's healthy food, blah, 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 and all that. And you'll have people go, well, they should be supportive, blah, 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 blah. For me, I'm going to be on this for six months. What's he supposed to do? Have vegetables and salad every night? No, I don't care if he has a pizza. Yes, before I have. Why? Because I wasn't in the right frame of mind. I was too busy concentrating on everything that I was so, say, missing out on. Whereas actually what I was really missing out on was life in general. But I was so busy trying to blame everybody else that I couldn't do my diet that him eating a Domino's pizza next to me was the perfect reason to be pissed off and go and pig out on a load of food once he'd gone to work. Now, with him working nights, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Quarter past half past eight, out the door he'd go. Half past eight, out the door I'd go. Off to go and get myself a Chinese or a Domino's or go to the supermarket, stock up on a load of crap that I would literally not be stocking up on. I would eat all in one night. But in my head, it was all his fault because he'd eaten tea. And yet, I moan at him all the time for not eating tea properly because of the job that he does because it's very physical it's during the night it's freezing cold so then when he does eat tea whether it be pizza steak whatever I'd then be pissed off at him because I couldn't have it as well so the poor Blake couldn't win and I'd imagine there's probably many husbands partners girlfriends boyfriends whoever they are mums dads brothers sisters that feel exactly the same. They try and do the food out of the way and that's wrong. So they just eat normally and that's wrong. Yet the reality is, who are you actually angry at? Are you really angry at them? No. You're angry at yourself because you're needing to go on this diet or you've got to a point that you're not happy with. You've allowed yourself to get to a weight that you've gone, what the fuck? You've decided to do something about it. And because they're not doing the same thing, you're pissed off. Well, not at them. You're pissed off at you that you've got to a point that you need to do something about it. That you didn't just eat normally or rein it in a bit months and months ago before you came one, two, four, five, ten stone overweight. So is it really their fault? No. Not in the bloody slight list. So, yes, the kitchen does look like a disaster zone. Now, before, I would have absolutely ripped into him. Maybe not quite ripped into him. Been a little bit pissed off that I'm on my diet and he's gone and left his plates everywhere. Well, actually, he's left his stuff everywhere because he literally ate, cooked it, ate it and went to work. Now he would quite happily come back in the morning and tidy all this up. But I'll do it because he's been working for 12 hours in the cold, in the rain, doing a difficult job. And he doesn't need to come home to a kitchen full of shit. And do I feel hard done by? Not this time. Because it's my... It's me that got me to this weight. It's me that's decided that this weight is not somewhere I want to be. And it's me that's decided that the action I'm going to take is a very strict diet. Now, I could have done any single diet. I still wouldn't have necessarily been able to eat what he was. I couldn't have had steak cooked in butter on most diets that I'm aware of. Um, I couldn't have had new potatoes drowned in butter. 
that I'm aware of. Yes, I could have had a variation on that, but actually what I wanted was the butter that was all over the steak. But the thing is, that's why I'm here. That's why I am at this weight. So I'm just sort of wondering how many of you have ripped into people, absolutely taken their head off because it's their fault. Because they don't respect the diet. They don't respect this. They don't respect that. They're deliberately eating stuff you can't have. Well, yes, yeah, sometimes people do deliberately eat it. But if you're doing it for you, because the fuck what they're eating. You carry on having your shakes, having your products, having your meals, doing it day by day. And they can eat that dominoes until it comes out their ears because next thing you know it's them that needs to go on that diet and sometimes what you also need to remember is you poke at other people's insecurities they're annoyed people go and eat things deliberately one because they want to tempt you not to knock you off your diet but because they feel guilty they know that they can go and eat whatever they want because they've not chosen this diet so they go and buy a big Domino's pizza and offer you a slice because they don't understand fully. Not many people that haven't done the diet fully understand that you can't actually have anything that's not on it if you're on step one. Um, so sometimes it is ignorance. Some people panic. If they suddenly see that you've lost like three, four stone, they're like, shit. What if she thinks she's better? Can go and find somebody else. What if she doesn't want me anymore? It it can pull up those insecurities. There's no point being angry at somebody about that. Talk to them. It makes life a lot easier. So, in a bit, I am going to uh, do the washing up this waiting for me. With all that lovely garlic butter sat in there. <laughs> Um, fill the dishwasher up and go to bed quite soon but I'm going to bed knowing one thing I've stuck to the plan I've not used him having something that I like as an excuse to give up you can make a million and one excuses but the bottom line is they're all excuses some seem more justified than others and people will accept them more readily. Um, there are many, many things that is a perfect excuse. Yes, there's family things that go on. Yes, people pass away. Relationships break down, jobs change, people move house. You've had a crap day at work. The dogs ran off your child's unwell, there are a million and one different excuses. Mine, I could have, I could have turned anything into an excuse to be fair. I was too cold so I needed to eat, I was too tired I needed to eat, I was bunged up so I needed to eat, I, my legs were hurting so I needed to eat, I was in a bad mood, I was in a happy mood. Someone was celebrating a birthday, someone was celebrating a breakup, someone was commiserating a breakup. There is like, the list is endless. You can turn anything into an excuse. Good, bad, ugly. I'm not saying people are wrong for coming off the plan when there's stuff going on at home. I'm not at all. Because I did when my dad died. But, they are all excuses, or it was for me. It was a perfect excuse to come off it. A perfect excuse to basically go back to my old life. A perfect excuse. Who the fuck is going to argue with you when something that big happens? Who the fuck? Who is going to turn around and say, no, you're not having that bag of chips? And I'm like, oh, I don't really feel like doing my diet because such and such happened. Well, my dad's passed away, so I'm just going to have a chippy tea with my mum. What? Did it make it any better? No. 
Did I roll out the excuses then for the next three years? I'm fucking straight I did. Hence, I ended up heavier than my start weight. I did what everybody said would happen. Oh, you'll lose it all and then you'll just put it back on and some. Yeah, I did. But not because it's a fad diet. Because I just didn't stick to the plan. I didn't follow it through. I didn't work up the steps. And as it got further away from when my dad died, more and more excuses came out. It was no longer, oh, but this happened. Oh, but that happened. Pretty much I could have told you it rained so I needed to eat or the sun came out so I needed to eat. The sky was blue, I needed to eat. The sky was grey, I needed to eat. As far as I was concerned, I needed to eat. I also needed to continuously have my stuff my face before going on the diet day. The only problem was this meant I was actually eating more than I was before I even started Cambridge. Because every single week there was at least one, I'm gonna start the diet again tomorrow. So in order to do that, I need to have a takeaway but which one am I going to have? So I've already had a pizza hut. I've already had, I've already had fish and chips. So I must need a Chinese. And then something new comes out and think, shit, I haven't tried that. Oh, I can't start it today. Cause what if they disappear? Like the fuck chocolate is going to disappear off the face of the earth. And let's face it, if it ain't here in a year's time and I can't try it, it probably wasn't that good anyway. And then it'd be, well, if I've got carby stuff, then I need sweet stuff to go with it. And then, shit, I'm going to have to eat all of this tonight before he comes in. So that he thinks I'm still doing my diet. Doesn't know that I've had another restart day. And here we go again. So I've now stuffed my face to the point that I feel sick. Need to wait a bit longer for some of it to go down so that I can eat the rest of it possibly chuck the odd cheap bit in the bin because I've brought far too much and I don't want him to see it and then we'll do the same again next week or maybe just in a couple of days time because I'm pissed off with him he has dared to mention I thought you're on your diet and I have absolutely lost it with him he made a very good point the other week the amount of time I have been on my diet I should be like a stick insect to be fair, the amount of time I've been on the diet, or so say been on the diet, I shouldn't even be here. I should be non-existent. I should have been able to lose my whole body weight about 10 times over by now. So, have we really got anyone else to blame other than ourselves? Have we really got the right to absolutely rip shit into people because they turn around and say things like, I thought you were on your diet, or go out and buy yourself a KFC and eat it sat next to you. What are you going to do? Rip into the stranger that just walked past with the most amazing smelling burger? Ain't that bloody fault. You ain't got a sign round your head, have you? Saying, on a diet, steer clear. Although maybe some of us should do. Um, so yeah, well, that's my thoughts on that. I know some people are going to disagree and be like, well, he should be more supportive. He shouldn't do this. He shouldn't do that. Maybe some people should be a bit more supportive, but do you know what? Doing this for me and no one else. Yes, I want to have a happier, healthier life with my boyfriend. I want to be able to go out and do things with him that I've not been able to do because of my weight. But ultimately, it's for me. It's going to make my life personally a million times better. It'll also make me happier. No one else can make you feel happy. No one else can pop you a pill or anything. It just masks it. Someone can temporarily make you feel a bit better. A bunch of flowers can make you smile. But if inside you're not actually happy with yourself, no one else can fix that. Only you can. And stuffing your face with food is the equivalent of the drug addict that injects heroin the alcoholic that drinks just one more drink. You're just trying to block something out, whether it's to make yourself feel better, to drown out the pain, 
whatever it is that you're avoiding, food isn't the answer. And I'm not saying that f by losing all the weight, everything is fixed. But this diet isn't about losing the weight. It's about learning to not use food as a coping mechanism. Learning to reset your whole way of thinking around food. So if I want to go out and have a McDonald's, then I have a McDonald's. But I don't then have a McDonald's with an extra portion of this and an extra burger and then go over to Krispy Kreme because it's just across the road and then have a whopping great Costa coffee to the point that I feel sick. It's about having some of the things that, if that's what you enjoy, have it. Just not every fucking day. Because really, let's face it, I never got to this size by just uh, sniffing a McDonald's, did I? That didn't happen. Or sniffing a KFC. It's because I didn't know when to stop. Fool doesn't exist. Fool is literally, I'm probably going to throw up type fool. Whereas for my mates, fool is when they're satisfied. And that's what this diet is about. It is about resetting that whole mindset around eating. That food isn't there to be absolutely gorged on. But it also isn't there to use as an upper or a downer or whatever you're using it for. It, that's not what it was designed for. It's what it does, but that's not what it's there for. Food is there to be enjoyed. If you're going to have a burger or a bar of chocolate or whatever, enjoy every little mouthful of it. Because how many of us can have eaten a whole bar of chocolate and did we really taste it? Probably not. How many of us mentally have wanted that burger so badly and then when we've eaten it, it tastes like shite? You get to the end of it and you're like, oh, that, that didn't taste as good as it did in my head. It's because it wasn't the burger you wanted. It was a distraction from whatever was going on in your life. A distraction from work, a distraction from home, a... Uh, I just feel a bit down and want to feel better. All of those things, um, especially I think for the people that are very overweight. Um, obviously I can't talk for all of them. I, I am only one person, the size of two, but I am one person. Um, when you're this big, don't think we know what normal eating is. For whatever reason, we lost that probably about five, ten stone ago. Um, so, yeah, it's just about resetting all that. Wow, 23 minutes. I have gone on a ridiculous amount of time. So, tomorrow, way day. Um, not really feeling like my weight's moving. That's probably very much in my head. It's week three or week three weigh-in. So, yeah, I'm probably just feeling a bit... Mm, need to get on those scales. I'm, I've been very used to jumping on and off the scales every day. I've very much stayed away from the scales. Um, partly because if I see that I've lost five pounds, that gives me the perfect excuse to go, hmm, just have a bit of chicken or just have a bit of that. Before I noticed, I have eaten about the equivalent of three people's four course meals. So scales are a no-no for me. Um, it's also my way of controlling things my only way of controlling things when everything in my life went absolutely tits up. So my weight was the only thing I could grab hold of, literally. So, um, so yeah, way day tomorrow. I am hoping, obviously, for at least a loss. Um, might be a little bit disappointed if not. However, whatever the scales say, I know that I've stuck to plan 100%. The only bit is the last 10%, so not quite 110%, purely because I have not always quite had the water that I think I've needed. Um, so that's the only the only sort of negative side, I'd say, maybe, to, 
to my diet is just needing to get a little bit more water in, um, which is why obviously I've been quite pleased that I managed at least four litres today, which has been fantastic. So I will see you all again tomorrow to let you know what my new weight is hopefully at least a pound down so that we've got something new to report um my weigh-in is with the of course mitch james um like i've said before i'm pretty sure quite a lot of you have heard of him so i will be seeing him tomorrow about half past five so so yeah we'll see what that brings but whatever the scales say next week will still be 100 percent guaranteed because that is how we're doing it this time because this time i am proving that no matter how many times you fuck with the plan it doesn't mean you can't do it so this time is a don't fuck with the plan as a little phrase that mitch has well and truly coined there i'd say um i have gone from fucking with the plan well and truly to don't fuck with the plan um so yeah, we will report back tomorrow night. So for now, bye.